So I know we've already done some of the arteries of the equine in a past video, but we're gonna do a little bit of a refresher here. And it's also uh, because I wanna add in some of the nerves of the lumbosacral plexus. So to give us just some orientation, we're looking at the medial aspect of this cadaver with cranial being here, caudal being here, dorsal and ventral. So here we can see the internal iliac artery coming off and giving off the internal pudendal artery and the caudal gluteal artery. The internal pudendal, the first branch from that is going to be the remnants here, which is gonna be the umbilical artery. And the internal pudendal is gonna continue caudally back to this region where it would be giving off in the male, the prostatic artery. And we'll look at that on the other side. Here we see the caudal gluteal artery, and the caudal gluteal actually continues distally uh, and caudally back here. And here is actually an artery that is going to is eventually become the, me the median caudal artery. It actually is a branch of the caudal gluteal artery. Here we can see where the cranial gluteal artery is branching from the caudal gluteal and giving rise to the obturator artery. And the obturator artery gives off that iliacofemoral artery right there. It also is giving off the iliolumbar artery going cranioventrally. And then the cranial gluteal is continuing through the greater ischiatic foramen to enter the gluteal muscles. So to orient yourselves further in here, we wanna look at some nerves. And the first one being very pretty obvious here is gonna be the obturator nerve which is going to be running right next to the obturator artery. Now the obturator nerve originates from the lumbar plexus here, where also is going to be giving rise to this nerve, which is the saphenous nerve. And the saphenous nerve will be running down distally along the leg with the saphenous artery. And again, we'll also look at this once we move to the other limb. But for now, let's focus on the lumbar plexus, which is right here. We see the lumbar plexus gives rise to multiple nerves, including this nerve that we see running laterally, kind of coming off the cranial aspect and running laterally. That's going to be the cranial gluteal nerve. We see this very large chunk of nerve continuing distally down the limb. That's actually going to be the sciatic nerve. As I reflect the levator ani and coccygeus muscle and some of that sacrosciatic ligament, now we can see the presence of the caudal cutaneous femoral nerve and we see that it's actually splitting right here. Next, we see the caudal gluteal nerve, which is exiting laterally and going over towards uh, the superficial gluteal and sometimes will also supply the middle gluteal and the biceps femoris. So that's caudal gluteal. So those are all the arteries as they're coming off of the lumbosacral plexus. This limb is also opened up to where the adductor muscle has been removed. The semimembranosus has been transected and reflected, allowing us to see some of these beautiful medial thigh structures, including this iliopsoas muscle that's attaching onto the lesser trochanter and the quadratus femoris muscle, which would be lying right kind of, in this case, deep to the adductor muscle that's been removed. Here we can see the sciatic nerve splitting into the tibial nerve, which is going to be running between the two heads of the gastrocnemius. So this is the tibial nerve. And the tibial nerve gives rise to the caudal cutaneous sural nerve that's actually going to be traveling right next to the lateral saphenous vein. The other nerve that we see is going to be the common fibular nerve, which would be moving laterally and diving into the extensor muscles. As we continue distally, the tibial nerve continues deep to these flexor muscles and right at the area of the hock is going to split into a branch that's gonna go deep and come out 
on the lateral aspect. So now to reorient, we're on the lateral side here, medial side here. So the tibial is going to split into the medial plantar nerve and the lateral plantar nerve, which is on this side. So that's medial and lateral plantar nerves. Traversing with those nerves would be the like-named arteries, medial and lateral plantar artery. And the medial and lateral plantar artery comes from a fusion of some vessels down in this area, but we'll get to that in just a minute. So let's reorient ourselves back up into the area of the abdominal and pelvic cavity. Here we see the external iliac artery. And here we see where the external iliac has now split into the femoral artery. The first branch off the femoral artery is this artery going into the quadriceps femoris, and that's going to be the lateral circumflex femoral artery. The femoral artery is then continuing distally down the limb, after which it's gonna give rise to this artery, which would be coming down this way. So that's the saphenous artery. We then see this artery that's coming off and coming down to the area of the stifle. So that would be your descending genicular artery. Now what we're gonna do is reflect the adductor and semimembranosus muscles, as well as the medial head of the gastrocnemius, which is now allowing us to see the femoral terminating after the caudal femoral artery comes off as the popliteal artery. So this artery that we see right here on the caudal aspect of the stifle is the popliteal artery. Here we can see where the popliteal is giving off a pretty tiny artery, but that artery is gonna go underneath the caudal tibial muscle and come out underneath right here, which is the medial digital flexor and the lateral digital flexor. This artery coming down here is the caudal tibial artery. Now if we flip this limb over, actually we're going to transition over to this other leg because on this other leg, these cranial tibial muscles have been transected and reflected, allowing us to see deep within this region. And so here we can actually see that cranial tibial artery, which here is kind of cut a little bit, unfortunately. But it would be traveling right down along the tibia coming along the tibia, and will then continue again as the dorsal pedal. And in the equine, it's going to give off this artery that we see right here. So now we're looking at the lateral aspect of the limb, showing us the extensor muscles. And we can see this very large prominent artery that's running in a groove right between metatarsal bone three and metatarsal bone four. And that's going to be the dorsal metatarsal artery three in the equine. So if you remember in the bovine, it's kind of right up on the median plane of the metatarsal bones. In the equine, it's much more lateral in the groove between metatarsal three and the lateral splint bone, AKA metatarsal four. Running with this artery is a nerve we can see right here, if I can get it picked out, that nerve is gonna be dorsal metatarsal nerve three. So dorsal metatarsal artery and nerve three are running right next to each other. So finally, we've moved down to the distal end of this equine limb, and we're looking at the plantar aspect of the tarsus, metatarsus, and digits here. This large nerve we see traveling along the medial, medial aspect is going to be the medial plantar nerve. We're gonna reflect that crani or dorsally in this aspect. What, has, what we've done here is transected the superficial digital flexor tendon and the deep digital flexor tendon. And finally, the interosseous medius, AKA the suspensory ligament, has also been transected. Now what we're looking at is an artery 
and a nerve that would be lying directly on the plantar aspect of metatarsal bone three. And that is going to be plantar metatarsal artery and nerve three. Okay. So on this side, I believe the lab guide says you can call this the medial plantar metatarsal artery. That's fine with me. So this would be medial plantar metatarsal artery, or I'm sorry, and then along with it will be plantar metatarsal nerve two. And then if we flip to the lateral side, I'm not sure how well we can see it here, but if we were able to see another nerve and artery traveling along the lateral aspect, that would be the lateral plantar metatarsal artery and plantar metatarsal nerve three. So two is gonna be medial, three is gonna be lateral. Here we're looking at the cranial slash dorsal aspect of the crus, tarsus, and metatarsus. What we see here in this preserved specimen is this very thick tendon looking structure. That's actually the fibularis or peroneus tertius muscle. If we look at the dorsal aspect along the tarsus, we can see how this tendon, AKA muscle, the fibularis tertius, separates, which creates a tunnel for a different tendon to move through. This tendon is the tendon of the cranial tibial muscle. This tendon of the cranial tibial muscle has this little medial branch, which is specifically named the cunean tendon. It also has a dorsal branch, which is attaching dorsally down to the area of the proximal metatarsal bone three. The fibularis tertius has a dorsal branch that you can see wrapping underneath the cunean tendon and attaching parallel to the dorsal branch of the cranial tibial. So again, dorsal branch of cranial tibial, dorsal branch of fibularis tertius cunean tendon, and finally, the fibularis tertius also has this lateral branch that the middle extensor retinaculum, or tarsal extensor retinaculum, is actually attaching onto. So the lateral branch is actually this very robust large branch we see right here. Another few things that we can see very nicely is the proximal extensor retinaculum or cruel extensor retinaculum. Again, the middle extensor retinaculum or tarsal extensor retinaculum. And finally, the distal extensor retinaculum or the metatarsal extensor retinaculum. These other tendons that we can see traveling distally are going to be the tendon of the long digital extensor muscle and finally, the tendon of the lateral digital extensor muscle.